Fly, baby, fly. Buenas tardes, Raimundo. So, I found this video from a guy named Tom Stanton, in which he builds what is called a compressed air engine, which basically uses compressed air to push a piston, which is connected to a crankshaft, which turns the movement into rotation. Using that engine and compressed air stored in two soda bottles, he built an airplane that was able to fly for more than a minute. That's pretty cool, right? Here's the thing. I think his design is This video was brought to you by Shaley. Now, when I say Tom's design is poopy, I don't mean his actual design. What I think it's crap about this design is this, the actual piston crankshaft mechanism. Allow me to tell you why. When the piston reaches the apex and opens the valve, you have a maximum pressure, but because the connecting rod is basically vertical, almost no force is being transferred to the crank. As the piston is pushed down and the gas expands, we get a better angle to transfer the force, but now the gas has expanded, so you don't have as much pressure and thus not as much force to be transferred. I was thinking about what would be a better option than the piston crankshaft mechanism, and the first thing that popped into mind was, why not just drop the engine altogether and just drill a hole in the cap of the bottles and propel the entire thing like a rocket? So, I put two soda bottles together and I 3D printed some nozzles. Then I built this test stand here which is basically just a lever connected to a scale. If I push here, it gives me a value of force in the form of grams here. For the air to last more than a minute I had to use a nozzle with a diameter of 0.8 millimeters, which is super tiny. But at peak pressure the nozzle only produces about 50 grams of thrust, which is a fraction of what Tom is doing with this engine propeller combo. To trick the laws of physics, I placed my nozzle at the end of a long bar to get more torque. Basically I built one of those turbines the Greeks invented like 3000 years ago. And after some testing and post failure math, I realized I would need a 1 meter long bar for me to have enough torque. Yeah, I don't think I'm getting away with rockets and turbines this time. I think I'm gonna have to actually design an engine. The main problemo with the crank piston design is the fact that it has to turn linear movement into rotational one. A better solution would be to have a design that from the beginning produces rotational movement. And after doing some research, I found this one. It's called a pneumatic vane motor. This design is basically a rotational piston design, like if you morph the piston into a circle. The air comes in here, pushes the vane, and that makes the engine rotate. The first thing that I noticed was the fact that the rotor is off-centered, and the reason for that is this equation here, force equals pressure times area. If you center the rotor, the area and pressure are the same on both vanes and the forces cancel out. By off-centering the rotor, you're playing a trick on physics by ensuring the area here is much smaller than here. It's basically zero, which means this force is always much bigger than this one, because the other one is zero. I 3D printed this engine based on a picture I saw online and I gave it a go. And it works pretty well actually. It spins pretty fast. It works exactly as it should in theory, which I might say doesn't happen a lot. <laughs> the vanes are free to slide and are pushed out by the centrifugal force of rotation. The force applied to the vanes is always perpendicular to the vanes, which means you always get 100% of the torque being used for the rotation. And I don't know if you noticed, but there's no need for a valve. Alright. Now I'm gonna give it a try with the bottles, because before I was using the compressor. Um, Tom used two bottles of 2 liters each, and he pressurized them up to 7 bar. Um, I actually know you can pressurize them up to 10 bar, because I blew up bottles trying to find out, but that's more dangerous, and I need to keep this fair, so 7 bar it is. No cheating. Okay, that was pretty cool, but that was definitely not a minute. I'm using this pneumatic fitting as an inlet, which has an inner diameter of 2.5 millimeters. Luckily, because I did the tests with the rocket nozzle earlier, I know I need a hole of 0.8 millimeters for the air in the bottles to last more than a minute. What I'm gonna do is press a brass rod in here, and then use a tiny, tiny drill to do the 0.8 millimeter hole. Okay, it's done. Um, looking at the time, I think, yeah. I think I surpassed one minute, so that should be good. Next step, testing with the propeller, because the purpose of this engine is to spin a propeller. And this is said propeller that needs to be spun. Spin? Spin? It's a very lightweight carbon fiber sock wearing propeller. And it's also exactly the same one as Tom Stanton used, so let's give it a spin.
Okay. It's spinning a little bit slow, um, but that's to be expected, I guess, because now it has to push the propeller. It's like you riding a bicycle that is filled with tomatoes. The extra weight is going to slow you down. Not that you should do that. That's silly. Also, tomatoes are disgusting. I was wrong. Not about the tomatoes, they're still disgusting. But you remember when I said that in the engine, the air comes through here, it pushes this vein, makes it rotate, and because of centrifugal force, the veins are pushed out and sealed against the wall? Well, in reality, that's not what happens, because I recorded a slow motion clip of the engine running, and the veins are jumping up and down for some reason. I don't really know why, but I need to find a way to actually force them against the wall so they seal properly. And I think the answer is... Springes. At least I hope it is. Okie dokie. So, I 3D printed new veins in Rotor. The veins now have a hole where I'm gonna put these springs. I got the springs from some bands. They were the right size, so why spend money when you can destroy perfectly good bands? I need to cut the springs to the right length though, and I hope this actually helps. So the springs are definitely causing more friction. Uh, let's hope that doesn't become a problem. I'm gonna give it a test now. Nope. Friction is a problem. I think we're gonna put some, I'm gonna put some oil in here. Three, two, one. Wait, how is the oil coming out of the ball bearing? That makes no sense. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> I'm screwed. I can't really believe I didn't think about this before. I feel like an idiot. I was so quick to judge the piston crank mechanism for its faults that I completely forgot about its biggest advantage. Ceiling. Phew. In a piston engine, the only place that moves and needs to be airtight is this one right here. In a vane engine, it needs to be airtight here, 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 and here. Oh, and also here. Taking into account that my inlet is 0.8 millimeters in diameter, even if I have a gap of 0.1 millimeters in these spots, which we can all agree is insanely small, the area of leakage is still 5 times higher than the one from the inlet. It's like trying to fill up a balloon while having a massive hole in the balloon. What I mean is, it's not gonna work. I can't give up now, I mean, I'm too far down the line, I already said the piston crank mechanism is So I need to stop messing around and use every single trick I have up my sleeve. But first, I need more information. Sponsor time. Sometimes the best way to solve a problem is to take a break. So, I went on vacation to the Caribbean islands. Sun, beach, mojitos, and no challenge at all. No stress. I got bored in less than an hour. So, I decided to build a massive rocket out of sand. And pretty quickly I discovered that it's not easy to build tall stuff out of sand. So, I watched a tutorial on how to build sand castles. And apparently you need proper tools and not the ones that I bought at the dollar store. Anyway, I decided to build a rocket laying down and it was pretty cool, but after two minutes, someone stepped on it. And that someone was me, because it's fun to build stuff, but it's even more fun to destroy it. If you're wondering how I was able to watch a tutorial in the beach in the middle of nowhere, where there's no Wi-Fi to be found, well, that's thanks to this video sponsor, Sailey. Sailey is an eSIM service app that allows you to create a virtual SIM card for your phone so you can have signal or internet, whatever you are when you're traveling outside your country. With Sailey, you install the app, you choose the country you want to use the SIM card for, you choose a data plan, you install the SIM card, and that's it. You're back online. You can call people, you can watch my crappy videos wherever you are in the world. So be prepared. Use the link in the description down below to download the Sailey app and get an exclusive 15% discount on Sailey eSIM CTA data plans. Download the app and use the code in Texa at the checkout. Thank you so much for helping me with the videos. Now, let's get back to the problem at hand. Alrighty then. I noticed that even though in his bench test he always gets a runtime above 1 minute and a half, in his actual flight the plane was on the air for only 1 minute and 22 seconds, which means the minimum thrust necessary is probably this value here, which is about 150 grams of thrust. I hooked up an electric motor to my test stand to rotate the fancy propeller up to a speed that gives me the magical 150 grams of thrust, and that speed is more or less 1500 rotations per minute. But wait, because there's more. By reading the values of voltage and current the motor is pulling and multiplying them together, I get the electrical power that is being used. I can then use this equation for mechanical power to get the amount of torque that is necessary to accelerate the propeller to the desired 1500 rotations per minute. Now, let's talk about the big elephant in the room. Leaks. 
Me making this engine completely airtight is going to be practically impossible, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to try. And I have some ideas. For example, I 3D printed this prototype in this printer over here. I also have this printer here, which is a resin printer from Formlabs. It's called Form4. Now, Formlabs has this resin called Precision Model, which is, well, a precise resin. And if you're wondering how precise it is, well, I had to buy a new caliper just to measure the parts coming out of here. So uh, I was about to send this model to 3D print, but I just realized something. I don't really need three veins because three veins gives me more uh, RPM and power, but that's not my main concern here. My main concern is saving the air that I have in the bottles. So I think I'm going to go with two veins. I'm going to change this up uh, and 3D print it. I forgot the springs. So I was looking at the engine and I realized that because I only have two veins now, they're basically aligned. What if I use the rod in the center of the rotor to connect them? And in that way, when one vein goes in, it pushes the other out in the same exact amount. Okay, so here's the new model. And when I spin the shaft, they basically stay always in contact with the walls of the engine. It's working pretty well. And the friction is not that big. I mean, it's not zero, but I'm hoping some kind of lubricant or oil is going to help with this. So let's give it a test and see if this is actually better than the last version. Just listen to the sound of this thing when it's working without the propeller. Tomatoes are gross. Like and subscribe. It's gnarly. Yes! Yes! My idea worked! Tom Stanton can go eat a bag of tomatoes. <clears throat> so um, I said all of this before I measure the RPM, which was 360 rotations per minute, uh, a bit shy of the 1500s that I'm trying to get at. In light of the new information, I would like to rescind my common insult directed at Tom Stanton for now. To see where the leaks were, I injected the engine with blue water paint because if the paint leaks, you can bet your bottom that the air leaks as well. And as you can see, there are leaks everywhere. It is becoming clear to me that this is going to be a battle of friction versus leakage. Because if I tighten the dimensions of the engine, I get friction, the engine slows down. But if I loosen the dimensions, I get leakage and the engine slows down as well. So the solution is to get a low friction material. I found this table online, which has the coefficient of friction for several materials. And the best one is ice, which it would be funny to make an engine out of ice, but it wouldn't last long. I went for the second one, which is polytetrafluoroethylene, which is a fancy name for Teflon, which is the thing in your non-stick pan. I bought this block of Teflon and it costed me 30 euros. This is not plastic, this is white gold. But the claims are true, nothing sticks to it, not even glue. Also, very easy to cut, my CNC machine went through it like butter. I now have the same veins in roto as before but in Teflon, but because I can't do the holes for the rod in the CNC machine, I 3D printed some jigs to drill the veins and the rotor. I also added a flap valve to the apex of the engine that I made using a 0.4mm cheat of Teflon. The flap valve basically uses the air trying to leak to close the flap and seal it even better. Hi, welcome to another edition of Will This Engine Even Move? With me, I have the engine. So the engine is still leaking, like a lot. I have less friction, but I still have a lot of leakage. I just realized that there's no way I'm gonna get perfect dimensions with my CNC machine and CNC skills. It's like my grandfather used to say, the only parts that fit perfectly together are the ones that result from a broken one. Now, that reminded me of this time that I went to a camera lens factory and I saw a bunch of old ladies going like this. So I asked someone there what they were doing and they told me they were basically using one part of the camera lens to sand the other one to ensure a perfect fit. You see, it's not about being perfect in general, it's about fitting each other perfectly. Isn't that beautiful? So, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to CNC machine new parts, but make them a very tight fit. 
Then I'm gonna put some abrasive fluid in the engine and run it until I feel almost no friction. In that way, I should get as tight of a fit as I possibly can. Fly, baby, fly. What is this? Jesus! I need to get the digital tachometer to measure the speed. That is insane. I'm, I'm a little bit afraid of st staying close to this thing. And the engine is still leaking. Not as much as before, but it is still leaking. Okay, do you remember how I said this engine has way too many spots where the air can leak? What if I could eliminate some of them? So, this is called the vane motor, right? Because it has vanes that slide in and out to compensate for the offset of the casing. What if, instead of vanes, I machine these flaps into the rotor of the engine, and in this way, not only am I getting rid of a lot of spots where the air can leak, but also, I'm getting the same effect I get with my apex valve, in the sense that, if the air tries to escape, it seals the flap even more against the wall of the engine. Flappy engine, test numero uno! So the flappy engine uh, concept is working pretty well, I would say, a little bit too well. This engine exploding made me realize that I really need to stabilize the pressure coming out of the bottles, because I need a constant speed, so it makes sense that I should stabilize the pressure. Um, what I'm going to do is get a pressure regulator, set it for two bars and connect it to the bottles. Then I'm going to design a new flappy engine that works well with two bars. It's a win-win situation because, well, in this way the engine is going to run for longer. Okay, here we have the Flappy Engine version 2. I already filled the bottles uh, with air. Now I'm gonna set the pressure to 2 bar and see how fast it goes and for how long it runs. Let's do it. Okay, 2 bars. I'm not sure if this reached the 1500 RPM, but uh, it was not a constant speed. It was like accelerating to a peak and then slowly decelerating until it stopped. But I'm gonna tell you something. This was running for a while. Like, I don't know how much I'm gonna have to check. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that this is running for a long time, like two minutes, two minutes and a half. So I did another run with the engine and I measured the speed throughout the entire thing and the engine lasted almost three minutes and a half with a top speed of 1900 RPM. That is so cool. I do have to pay my respects to Tom Stanton though because this is so much harder than it looks. Um, I still don't know if my engine outperformed his because I don't have an airplane. I guess that's the next step. But I'm gonna be honest with you. It doesn't really matter to me anymore because I love my flappy engine so much and I'm pretty sure I can make it better. Um, if you have any idea to make this design better, post it in the comment section below because the best one is going to win a brand new 3D printer. Thank you so much for watching and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!